Rocky Rifle Works. Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you. Before we get started, we're actually looking incredible to see this many people in support and we actually have a lot more people coming too so I appreciate everyone that came here. All right so first things first we are going to have everyone stand and take their caps off for the singing of the national anthem done by our wonderful man right here named Stu. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight All the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the So much for that. All right, so we're going to get this kicked off here. Um, once again, we are exceptionally appreciative of everyone that could come out today. Um, it was supposed to rain; it could, still could, but this is, you know, pretty perfect for this winter that we have been having. So, thank you to everyone who came out. Um, as a lot of you know, this rally is pretty much to show how unhappy we are with the legislation that is being proposed. Talk right on it. There we go. Can everyone hear me now? Mm. Excellent. All right. So let's do this again. We are all gathered here just so we can show how unhappy we are with what is going on in this wonderful state. We will not stand by and let all of our rights be stripped away. We will not become criminals. We are here to just peacefully show that we are normal people that do not want to go unprotected. So once again, Noveski Rifle Works and Radiant Weapons and everyone else, thanks you for coming out here. We We do have some wonderful guest speakers out here today. We're going to be introducing a few of them as the day goes on. We're going to have this band burn. They are fantastic, so you know, give them a warm welcome once they get back on stage. We have a bunch of food trucks, uh, facilities over there. And once again, in that back corner, there's a big black tent. That is the Radiant Tent, and we will let you know how you can better get involved. And we can answer any questions that you might have. The first speaker is actually the CEO of Radiant Weapons, Josh Underwood. He has designed everything that we have and he is just incredible. So if you could give him a warm round of applause and here's Josh Underwood. Welcome fellow patriots. It's awesome to have you all here today. I don't do much public speaking, so I got notes here, and uh, hopefully I did okay for you. Welcome, and thank you for coming to the Defend the Second Rally. My name is Joshua Underwood, CEO and owner of Radiant Weapons. I've been a shooter since I was nine years old, and as a teenager, decided I wanted to build highly accurate rifles for a career. I took a long road into CNC machining, product design, and running my own machine shop before eventually having time to start designing 
my own product line in 2009. It has been a long and adventurous road full of many obstacles, but I am proud to say that Radiant now employs, sorry, now plays a role in employing 40 Oregonians, making high-end rifles and rifle accessories for the firearms community. Thank you. Obviously, with this being my passion, I am a staunch advocate of the Second Amendment. As a company, and honestly, personally, for many years, I have not been politically active, being very busy building the business. It took seeing the Oregon legislature try for a second time to push through draconian gun laws to decide I had to take a stand and do whatever I could to help bring the people of this state together and make our voices heard. Thank you so much to all of you for showing up to do just that today. Our founding fathers strove to create a system of governance that would provide liberty and justice for all. Because of, the, because of this, the amendments of the United States Constitution are meant to equally provide rights and protections for every individual citizen in every state of this nation. For example, the First Amendment, our right to free speech. It is a right of every citizen, and the courts consistently uphold this right for each and every citizen with no regard for what state in which they reside. The same can be said of every other amendment outlined in our U.S. Constitution. I will not belabor this further, but to get to the point, the Second Amendment is your right as a U.S. citizen, no matter what state in which you reside. Any law a state legislator would pass to infringe this right is on its face unconstitutional and therefore unlawful. Some would argue that this system outlined in the U.S. Constitution is not perfect. But in their humility and wisdom, the Founding Fathers granted a means to make changes to the Constitution through an amendment process. The legislators in this building behind me represent the citizens of this state who are also members of the United States of America. When legislators in this state are sworn into office, as part of their oath state the following, quote, I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Oregon, end quote. These legislatures know full well that the firearms restrictions they are pushing are unlawful, and they also know that this anti-gun agenda does not have the backing of the people where they would ever have the hope of amending the U.S. Constitution. The ends do not justify the means with their desperate grasp for power in trying to force these anti-gun policies onto the people of this state. Our duty as citizens is to hold our representatives accountable for their actions. This could not be more clear, a more clear example of this than when they take unlawful actions to promote their own agenda that is in direct conflict the U.S. and Oregon state constitutions they swore to support. <laughs> Moving from the legal aspects and just addressing the basic logic of the situation, I would say this. The idea that restricting the rights of the people to keep and bear arms will result in less violence in our society is at its foundation completely flawed. Criminals by definition do not obey laws. Taking away the ability of law-abiding citizens to defend themselves from the lawless will only embolden those that would seek to harm others. In closing, I would like to thank the various organizations that have been hard at this fight long before our involvement. Oregon Firearms Federation, Oregon Firearms Association, National Rifle Association, and the Institute for Legislative Action. 
as well as Gun Owners of America. I want to thank our contributors from the industry, Novesky Rifle Works, and each individual who donated and or purchased the limited edition Raptor and Talon to help fund this event. Thank you. Just as importantly, I want to thank every person that volunteered to hand out flyers in their neighborhoods, and ultimately to everyone who took time out of their day to make the effort to put aside this time and show up to stand up for your rights. Lastly, I would like to thank my brother, Josiah Underwood, for taking on the organization and planning of this event, along with Mike Fry and Amanda McDougall, right here, who have, who have put in countless hours to implement each aspect of this event and answer every email and social media post that came in. May God bless this great country as we fight for our freedoms. Thank you. So, Bill Post, a representative, he will be speaking in about 30 minutes. For the time being, we're going to enjoy this band, Burn. They're going to do some wonderful things. If you guys have any questions, like I said, our booth is right back there. You guys can come back, talk to Josh Underwood yourselves, or any of us will be back there. So, have a great time. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, just have a great time. Thank you is going to be Representative Bill Post. Yes. Whoever he may be. I like Bill. I took his Facebook picture. Yeah, the yourself. black and white picture. Yeah. I took that picture. All right, and here he is. So let's give him a warm round of applause. USA! USA! Thank you. USA! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming today. My name is Bill Post. I'm the state representative from Kaiser, St. Paul, and Newburgh. I work in the Marble Nut House. I'm a Republican in the super minority, so I really don't work a whole lot. I, I just sit around and say, no. But I'd like to take a moment, I think this is really important, and if you would, join me. Two, I think we need a moment of silence for two very important things. Persons. First of all, our late Secretary of State, Dennis Richardson, who was a staunch defender of the Second Amendment, and also for all the veterans that are not only here today, but especially those who can't be here today because they paid the ultimate price. If you don't mind, I think a moment of silence is proper. Thank you. So I had this thing where I uh, talked on radio for a long time before I became elected. Why I did that, I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet, but we're going to get back one of these days. I want to talk to you about the way the media and the left have taken away the talking points on violence. Because that's what everybody talks about, right? They use, it's one word, gun violence. I always thought it was just called violence. When people do something naughty to somebody, it's violence. And I go all the way back. I'm a biblical kind of a guy. Not historically a biblical person, but I like the Bible. And one of the things that struck me was, does anybody remember what the first act of violence in the history of man was? In a short rock. Cain and Abel, a, a rock. So the local newspaper, the uh, Jericho Times, on the front page it said, rock violence today. <laughs> just outside the Garden of Eden, where we can't go in anymore. You don't hear that, right? When do you ever hear rock violence, knife violence, car violence? Oh, but it's gun violence. So my problem is they've stolen the language. Violence has always been a part of mankind's history. I don't think it's good. I think it's horrible. Again, from a biblical standpoint, if you remember, if you take a look at Genesis 5 and 6, 
God destroyed the entire world because of violence. He said every inclination of his heart is evil, talking about mankind. So we are a violent people. But here's where we bring in the Second Amendment. Constitutional writers back east in the 13 colonies and those who wrote our Oregon Constitution 100 years or so later, they wrote a couple of things. The Second Amendment and they wrote the Article 27 section of our Oregon Constitution because they knew that tyranny and violence go hand in hand. Tyranny begets violence. And we have to protect ourselves from violence and from tyranny. And that's why I will always defend the Second Amendment, and even more so if you're an Oregonian, Article 27 of our Oregon Constitution. It is strong. It says for the defense of the people. The defense of the people. No. So when you have people that come to you, or whoever they come from, and they say, oh, it doesn't say anything in the Second Amendment about having an AR-15. The Oregon Constitution says defense of the people. It doesn't define what that means. Defense of the people. Violence is not going anywhere. In fact, it's going to get worse. Violence is going to get worse because that is man's heart. So what do we have? We don't have a gun problem. Guns have been here for hundreds of years. We have a heart problem in America. We have a problem. I'm going to tell you what the answer is. Now, some of you may agree and some of you may not agree. I believe if we turn our hearts back to God, we will find peace. If we love one another, if we teach our children to love one another, if we teach our children to obey God, God's a pretty smart guy. He knows what was good for us and what's best for us. The second thing I want to talk to you about is young people. Those of you, the young folks that are here, and you, you can define what young is. Of course, me compared to that guy over there, I'm young. But young people, become journalists. Infiltrate the journalism. Take over and start telling what really goes on. Wait and see what happens today. Remember, there'll just be a couple hundred of you here today. That's what will be reported tomorrow. Become politicians. Now, oh, I know, before you freak out, but get in there. Get in there. Get young people. Start working up your way to getting, not that that's a higher calling, but what I'm saying is start with your school boards, your fire boards, your water boards. Get elected. Then you can start making a difference in a place like that over there. Lastly, to everybody, civic engagement. I want to be really honest with you because that's the way I am. If you send those blast emails that are hand already written for you and you just say, Bob, and you send it to all 90 of us over there, I'm just going to tell you, they don't do any good. And here's why. I want you to take a minute. Take a minute and say, Dear Bill, and write what your heart wants to tell me. If you send those blast emails, they generally kind of get ignored because it's the same email over and over and over and it says, you guys. And I say, wait a minute, what about me? What about Dennis Linthicum? What about Kim Thatcher? What about Fred Rock? We voted no on all the gun bills. So don't send it to me. I mean, I want to hear from you, but you know, we voted no. So take a moment and write it. Take a moment and sit down and say, dear representative, or just say Bill with me, I don't care what you do, but just write, dear Bill, this is my concern and here's why. When you send those just pre-coded, handwritten, whatever the emails, they're just not as effective. Be personal and talk to us. People want to listen to you. So that's my advice. Civic engagement. Show up over there at the Nut House and make your voice heard. You've done it partly by today. I know there's nobody over there today and there was some confusion of will we hear anything. They will hear you. I tr just trust me, they will hear you. All of you that are recording this, make sure you put it on your Facebook pages and your Twitter pages and your Instagram pages. Make sure you tag other le legislators from this building. Make sure they know you were here today to defend the Second Amendment. God bless America, God bless Oregon, and God bless you. All right, big thank you to Bill over here. That was incredible. Do exactly as he says. You need to write to the people that are opposing this. 
that is pretty much what we're here to teach you guys. Um, coming here on a Saturday, it did raise some concerns because no one is at the Capitol. However, even if you were here on a Tuesday, do you think that they would be out here listening? No, you need to write to them. You need to write to them often. Do anything that you can. Um, right now we're going to have our band come back up. In about 30, we're going to have Adam Kraut come up with some words. So thank you guys again. If you have any questions, booth back there. And we are selling off those uh, combo Raptor talons where 100% of the proceeds are going to go to this effort as well as efforts that will continue after this rally. So thank you. Um, this is the greatest turnout, so thank you. So we have a little bit of a change in the schedule. We're going to welcome Senator Kim Thatcher up here. So thank you. Look at her. She's wonderful and beautiful. And here you go. All right. Hey, let's give a big shout out to Radiant Weapons. Yeah. Noves Noveski Rifle Works and Oregon Firearms Advocates and Oregon Firearms Federation, Just Instinct, and so many I'm probably forgetting. But thank you, thank you for everyone being here. And you know, the countless volunteers, the ones that are here right now, who have made this possible. Thank you so much. I also want to make sure that we thank the law enforcement officers that are here because if there was ever a time and a day for people to want to cause trouble and make us look like the bad guys, today be the day. So thank, thank the law enforcement officers that are here. We're all here today to celebrate the Second Amendment, but also, unfortunately, we're having to defend the Second Amendment as well. It's becoming something that has to be part of our daily routine. Take care of the kids, go to work, defend the Second Amendment. That's just kind of what we have to do nowadays. We all know that we cannot afford to compromise. Keep giving inches and inches enough is enough. And we all know that on the other side, it is never enough. In fact, I just read a tweet from Jeff Merkley that said that we need to join in with what New Zealand is doing. <gasps> yeah. <sighs> we, we all know that disarming law-abiding people is wrong. I'm State Senator Kim Thatcher, and I represent Oregonians in the State Senate, and in that, like what was referred to earlier, is the Nut House. So, I represent Oregonians all over, the, up and down the, the valley, and not only do I believe strongly that we need the right to self-defense, I think it is a human right. I think we all know that. All of us here, we have a diverse group of people here coming together from all walks of life, all political persuasions. We have libertarians, we have Republicans, we have probably Green Party, we have Democrats, we have non-affiliated, we have people who never want to vote, but I hope you will change your mind and get active. And then we have, we are here together to say hands off our firearms. Yeah! We use our firearms to protect our families. We use our firearms to put food in the freezer for our families. We use our firearms for recreation and to protect our rights. We are not the bad guys. So we have to push back. Pushing back is key to stopping some of the, well, there's a list of bad bills coming through that building. But as the session opened, Senate Bill 501 had legs. But guess what? They're gone! <laughs> it's immobilized for now. There's nothing that's ever completely dead. These kinds of bills are never actually dead, and that's why I say every day we have to be defending the Second Amendment. But there are many other bills that we need to immobilize, many. And there are many yet to be identified bills that are going to be given a hearing in that building in the Senate Judiciary Committee. This will be early, early morning on the 
April 2nd. So if you can be here, everybody who's here, I want you to show up. And if you can't show up, please write a well thought out email being respectful and letting people know why you're opposed to these bills. Everyone here today needs to speak up and, well, like we said, we gotta defend our rights. I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother. I believe in the safety of our families and our children. We all do that. Gun-free zones, as we know, and bills that disarm us, they don't make people safer. They make us all less safe. They endanger lives and put us in the crosshairs of criminals who don't give a rip about any laws. We cannot forfeit our self-defense rights for the political gain of a few politicians and billionaires like Michael Bloomberg. These folks have made it their mission to confiscate our firearms. They all have security details. We don't. Our families don't. We are the security detail. I, like some of the people you've heard from today and some of the people you'll hear from later today, have all been strong advocates for you and you'll, I think, hear from a couple more. There are just not enough of us. We need you. And we need you because we can't do it alone. We have to work together. Activate people around you. We need those who believe in defending their second to get active in their communities, get active in state politics, run for office, run for a position in your party, join a party if you don't belong to one, get active, write letters to your, uh, to your state representatives, your senators, show up in committees, there's written testimony you can do, we'll help you figure out how to submit it, you can just call one of your friendly legislators. Or you can just call yours, just don't tell them what you're doing. Anyway, <laughs> just tell them you want to submit testimony. I just don't want you to be put off. But there's a lot of things you can do. Get on Twitter, get on Facebook. Make sure that people in your sphere of influence know the truth. Because I think the truth is on our side, but always be respectful. We have the facts. And defending the second is not just a one day thing. Gotta keep up that fight. Thank you so much for being here and being peaceful. Wonderful. So we're giving the band just a short break. I just met this lovely girl here, Savannah. She has a few words for you. Um, I will hold this microphone for you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm a 15-year-old kid who goes to Lake Ridge High School uh, in Lake Oswego. And um, <laughs> I don't want to sound basic, but I, I don't feel safe at my school at all. Um, in Lake Oswego, there's a bunch of rich, suicidal kids strung out on antidepressants that could go off at literally any minute, and uh, there is no security at my school. My dad walked around my school for about 10 minutes, and uh, <laughs> no one dared ask him, you know, like, oh, who are you? What are you doing at this school, like, walking around? Um, <laughs> And I want to know when people decided to listen to these high school kids. Like, I go to school with them, and uh, they're not that smart. I, and it's funny, because I'm asking you to listen to me, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, they're not that smart. I, I want to know who decided, oh, let's let these high school kids who are completely uneducated um, make our decisions for us. Or, oh, it's okay, they're trying to make a difference. Well, it's for the wrong cause. And <laughs> I like guns. I shoot competition. Um, <laughs> uh, I get a lot of um, bull crap because of it. Uh, I remember this one time I was talking to my friend, and I'm like, oh yeah, this weekend I'm going shooting with my dad. And she just got, she got scared. Like, no joke, she got scared. <laughs> anyway. I feel like sometimes high school kids, you know, <laughs> just doing certain things and going on these protests, I feel like that's telling a chef how to cook. Listen, um, gun control isn't going to do anything. Uh, people are making it harder for law-abiding citizens to abide the law. 
And I know that's the case for a lot of things, but this is the Second Amendment. Uh, we should be able to protect the future. Secure our damn schools and stop listening to emotional dumb kids. Please. Savannah, everyone. Look at that. America's future. Thank you guys again for coming. We're going to put the band back on for a little bit. Adam Kraut will be up after that, so be sure to listen to him because he's pretty smart and knows what he's talking about. So thanks again, once again. If you guys have any questions, find us back there. Um, i really like to thank everyone that has helped put this together. My family at Radiant Weapons, Noveski, Oregon Rifle Works, OFF, Oregon Pushback. There's so many companies that have put so much time and effort into this. So thank you to everyone. Um, if people are parked at uh, the Safeway, they are apparently trying to tow some cars from there. So if you're parked at the Safeway, we do have an underground parking facility right over here. I'm not sure if it's full or not, I have no idea, but park there instead, just so you're not towed away. So we're getting Adam set up here. Um, Adam has done a lot for the firearms community. He is currently running for president of the NRA. Trying to be president. <laughs> so, vote for him because he is incredible. He will be up here momentarily. Um, another thing that I'd like to just throw out there, if you could, be sure to pick up after yourselves. There's a bunch of garbage cans all around here, so let's not, you know, leave a bad mark here. And here we go. All right, Adam Kraut. Here we are. Let's applaud him. USA! 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 <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Adam Kraut. I'm a lawyer. I practice firearms law. Don't hold being a lawyer against me, please. Uh, I also host a YouTube show called The Legal Brief, where we dispel the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. <laughs> And on occasion, I've been known to put pen to paper to write an article. Uh, also, according to the billing for speakers today, I am a Second Amendment activist. Some may prefer the word advocate. And it's so great to see so many of you fellow Second Amendment advocates here today. Because that's exactly what you folks are, Second Amendment advocates. Or if you prefer some Oregonian pride, perhaps your Article 1, Section 27 advocates as well. <laughs> some people think that if you're not standing up on stage in front of a crowd, behind a microphone, or being blasted all over the internet, that you can't be or you're not an advocate. Make no mistake, that is patently false. Advocacy takes many forms. Some put you up in front of a, a crowd, behind a microphone, Others involve different media platforms, but usually it's things like showing up at gatherings like this, contacting your representatives, or can even be as simple as sharing your passion for firearms with someone who's unfamiliar or undecided on the topic. And if we're taking a poll as to what I think is most important, it's the latter one, sharing your passion. Sharing your passion about firearms with another is possibly the single most effective way to change somebody's perception on guns. You see, growing up, I grew up in a house where we didn't own any guns, and quite frankly, we never really talked about them. They weren't part of our lives. At some point, my parents bought me a BB gun and I took it around the backyard, but nobody ever showed me how to properly use it in a safe manner, or even the basic function of it. It wasn't until one fateful day when I was 12 years old at Camp Horseshoe in Rising Sun, Maryland that I was put behind a bench on the rifle range. That was the day, at least for me, my life changed in relation to firearms. I was peering down the sights of a bolt, Marlin Bolt Action 22. By the end of that week, I had earned my rifle merit badge and I had gone back to that range for the open shoots for scouts every night. When my parents came to pick me up, I wouldn't shut up about how much fun I had at camp, particularly the rifle range. A couple years later, I turned 18 years old. So I did what every 18 year old does. I went out and bought a gun. It was a Remington 870. 
It was a Remington 870, and when my parents found out I had bought it, they told me to get rid of it. I still have my Remington 870. When I turned 21, I went to my local sheriff, I applied for my license to carry, and I bought my first handgun, an ancient KP2000. My parents again started to question my decision-making process. They were dismayed, to be quite frank. At this point, the conversation about guns in our home had been happening for some time. I bought more guns, including an AR-15, which made my parents even more unhappy with me. I was even asked, what do you need that for? And the questions that you usually get from people that don't understand the usefulness of firearms. Right around the time I turned 23, my dad approached me out of the blue and asked me to take him shooting. So naturally I obliged. We went to the range and after some basic firearm safety, we started to shoot. You see folks, this is where it all started to change. After shooting a few rounds, that same stupid grin that was on my 12 year old face back at Camp Horseshoe was now on my dad's. Shortly after our trip, he bought his first gun. He got his license to carry. And his attitude about firearms began to change. While he still held some views that were contrary to mine, such as the usefulness of AR-15s and standard capacity magazines, he went from being staunchly anti-gun to somewhat pro-gun. And as time wore on, his opinion about AR-15s and standard capacity magazines has also changed. He now believes that people should have them and understands that the Constitution protects that right. However, change didn't happen overnight. You see, my dad was born in New York, grew up in New Jersey. His only experience with guns was what he saw on TV shows, on the news, and in movies. It wasn't until we went shooting that he ever even held a gun. But just like that, the mis and misinformation he had been fed his whole life started to dissolve. So if the question you have is, what is the most effective thing you can do to help solidify the future of firearms rights here in Oregon and here in the United States, I would tell you it's as simple as just taking a new person shooting. Show them that guns are just tools that can be used for the defense of yourself and your loved ones, or even just having a good time with friends at the range. <coughs> your positive interaction with them will likely change their perception on firearms and may even possibly turn them into a future Second Amendment advocate. So, while engaging in one-on-one -on -one interactions like that may help sway the opinion of a person, there are others who require a different sort of touch. Every once in a while, some elected officials need a reminder that they're elected to serve the people. And that's why we've assembled here today. To remind the people that work in the marble nut house behind me, their words, not mine, that they are in fact public servants. Now, some of them do know that. Representative Post was here, he spoke. Senator uh, Linthicum also already spoke. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Senator Thatcher already spoke. Uh, and you'll be hearing from Senator Linthicum later on. Unfortunately, nowadays it seems that more often than not, others forget that not only are they serving the people, but they need to do it within the bounds of both the federal and state constitutions. Oregon adopted its constitution back on February 14, 1859. Article 1, Section 27 enumerates the right to keep and bear arms. It states that people shall have the right to bear arms for defense of themselves in the state. The federal constitution declares that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. In District of Columbia versus Heller, the Supreme Court held that there's an individual right to bear arms, and that was incorporated by the 14th Amendment due process clause in McDonald versus Chicago. Yet, even in spite of Oregon's clear constitutional provision, Senator Wagner and Representative Salinas sponsor a bill that would eviscerate your right to keep and bear arms. SB 501, which I'm sure you're all intimately familiar with, would impose a magazine capacity limit of five rounds, limit the purchase of firearms to one long gun and one handgun in a 30-day period with a permit and require background checks on ammunition, limiting it to 20 rounds every 30 days. Fortunately, Senator Przanski has decided to stop that bill from being heard in committee. However, 
However, that doesn't mean the threat is over, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. SB 501 is one of many bills that have been introduced this session that seek to limit your ability to exercise your constitutional rights. You can find a complete listing of these bills on fpcaction.org, and I'm sure the NRA website has them as well. But what I'm certain of is, I'm certain that everybody here took the time to contact your senators to tell them to vote no on SB 501. However, I've had many conversations with people across the country that tell me that they don't have time to reach out and let their representatives or senators know how they feel about certain bills. And others just say that, I, I don't know what to do. How do I do it? Be it state or federal, the process is very easy. I always encourage people to just pick up the phone and call. Now you heard from Representative Post earlier tell you that form letters he doesn't like, he likes them to be a little bit personal. And that's great. If you have the time and you have the know-how, do that. Most importantly, it can be done quickly. I've posted pictures of my call logs where I've contacted all my representatives and it's been under five minutes. I suggest storing their main office numbers in your phone. That way you can call on your way to or from work, during your lunch break, or whenever else is convenient for you. No matter what time works best for you, it's important that you take action. If you prefer a different method, again, websites like fpcaction.org and the NRA's website all have ways that you can contact your senators via electronic means and your representatives as well. At the beginning of my remarks, I called you all advocates. But your advocacy does not stop here today with this rally. That's right. Once you guys depart Salem and you head home, there's more work to be done. There's more advocates to forge, and there's representatives to be contacted. The struggle to preserve our right to keep and bear arms never stops, nor should any of you. Thank you. Thank you. Kraut, he flew all the way here from Pennsylvania just to talk to you guys, so. You see him, he's usually around that black tent over there. Say hi, don't ask him for legal advice, because he will charge you a lot. All right, so we're gonna have another speaker up here, probably about 15, 20 minutes, so everyone just have a great time. Um, as he brought up earlier, FPC, the Firearms Policy Coalition, they are fighting for you. They were actually just in court yesterday fighting. So hop onto their website, fpc.org, firearmspolicy.com. There's a whole bunch of different ways to get there. Get involved, be active on there. They are seriously taking everything that you say and they are truly fighting for your rights. So be sure to pay them some type of recognition. And I'm going to get down from here. Thank you. Enjoy the band. I think she wants to rock out. She screams like I did when I was about 21, but I can't do that anymore. Daddy, she wants to rock, man. when you might
we are going to have Senator Lithicom come up here. He's going to say a few words. Give him a round of applause, please. Thank you, thank you. It's good to be here. You guys have nailed it. I bet you there's close to 3,000 people here today. Some of them have gone. Great job, you've nailed it. And there's a couple other things that are worthy to be n noted in terms of you guys look like the best constitutional crowd that I've ever spoken to. You know I'm in love with the Constitution, Woo! right? We live in a f constitutionally federated republic. That means we created the Constitution to limit the powers of the government and to provide the most freedom for the people. Yeah. Your liberty belongs to you, and you have to defend it. That's why the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, and the Bill of Rights are so important. Defending our rights comes from our heart and soul, and this is the pulse of America right here. I got news. This is fantastic. There's also um, several things we should be aware of. Our founders were sheer geniuses. They devised, they understood what liberty looked like. They understood what tyranny looked like. And they devised a system to protect the citizenry from the government. They did not design a system to protect the citizens from each other. They designed a system to protect the citizens from using the government against each other. And this is why it's so important that we should be able to come here from all walks of life, all different ages, all different walks, all different um, operations in terms of what do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? Where do you make your bread and butter? What kind of work do you do? Every one of you is coming from a different commercial or industrial or um, employment situation. Who in the world thought that we would have this big marble building behind us regulating how you have to hire your employees, what you have to pay your employees, what you have to do for your employees when they have a child or not? Shouldn't that belong to you? Shouldn't that belong to you as the employer or the employee? Yeah. So what we see is we see absolute control. Control over your medical choices, control over your schooling choices, control over your ability to protect your own lives and liberty with the Second Amendment. And the Second Amendment actually isn't even guaranteed by the Constitutional, it's guaranteed by God himself. It is an inalienable right. <laughs> Government does not have the freedom to take your right to defend yourselves or the lives of your family members. The, uh, Let's see, who was it? It was, um, it was, it was Samuel Adams or John Adams, one of the two of them, I, it must have been John Adams said, do not be intimidated, nor let your liberties be wheedled, there's a word we haven't used in a while, don't let your liberties be wheedled away from you by any pretense of politeness or you, you know, can you imagine? We're just trying to be polite. I want to be polite. I want to be delicate. I want to be decent. S John Adams said, don't let your liberties be wheedled away from you by any sense of politeness, decency, or delicacy, because these are just three different uses of chicanery, hypocrisy, and cowardice. We are here today to speak specifically to the Second Amendment. Your Second Amendment rights, your right to defend the lives of your family members, your own life, and the life of those that you may even encounter in adverse situations, that right belongs to you, and it's a God-given right. Don't forget it. 
let's not let this building impair our right to take care of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so we have another speaker here. Mr. Jeff Grossman, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure at all of you know, but the essence of a good political speech has three parts. Be bold, be brief, be seated. I can generally get two out of three. When I uh, look back on history, and I look at after the Civil War, you could say that perhaps at that time we were living in the land of Lincoln. Now we appear to be living in the land of Lenin. And I don't like it. When I took the uh, officer oath in 1977 to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, little did I realize how near and how close the enemy's domestic really were. Confiscating your guns is not about guns, it's about power. They will tell you, well, confiscation has never been tried before. Not true, it was tried once before. And from Lexicon and Concord, the shot was heard round the world. As, as patriots, we uh, are known to be patient and have a very long fuse. But we also know at the very end of that long fuse is one big ass bomb. Yeah. Yeah. But we really don't want that to go off. Despite what you hear from the mainstream media, this is not a partisan issue of tyranny affects all of us regardless of party affiliation. So what I really want to tell you about is, uh, you may have heard of a uh, former Marine name of Lieutenant Colonel Ali North, president of the NRA. Well, he's coming to town on Saturday, April 6th to do a fundraising dinner in McMinnville. It'll be dinner under the wing of the Spruce Goose. Uh, yeah, I don't, my wife's been handing out flyers for part Oh, there she is, my gorgeous and super intelligent wife. She still has some flyers left. Uh, said, Ollie North is the keynote speaker at this fundraising event. We really would like to see you there. And uh, so be sure and see her. She'll give you everything you, well, she'll give you a flyer. <laughs> and uh, as to what you can do, let me add something to a challenge for you. September 17th, by federal law, which by the way is probably unconstitutional, but September 17th is Constitution Day and schools are required to put on a Constitution program by federal law. So my challenge to you is to get involved with the schools this spring and over the summer and get your nose under the tent and have a program presented that you're going to deal with and set up to teach these kids the real Constitution. Thank you. I have one more speaker coming up here in just a moment. Um, before she comes up, I would just like to say thank you. I've seen a lot of industry partners here. Um, we asked a lot of uh, Oregon companies to help us set this up. And a lot of them did, so thank you to everyone. We see people from Noveski, people from SIG Optics, uh, weapon outfitters from Washington came down here. We just met some people who drove up 17 hours from California, so thank you to everyone for coming out here today. This has been fantastic. Um, our next speaker is Miss Maggie Rose over here. She's gonna come with some wonderful words for you guys. I want it. You're not going anywhere. Get back over there. I, I can still be a first sergeant when I'm out of uniform. Yeah. I want to thank Amanda and Radian um, for what they have done and also Novinsky, which is from Josephine County, uh, Grants Pass, Oregon. They're our sponsors. Um, it was awesome when I heard about this a few weeks ago and I got up on my website and 
I asked Amanda, give me all the information, and did she ever? And so we had the bus list up there, the times, pickups, everything. Uh, www.theconcord, like the Battle at Concord in Lexington, theconcordshow.com. And I'm here because of my husband, retired Captain U.S. Army, and Revolution Radio. Um, we just think what they're doing here is awesome. What we want to do is say thank you from Revolution Radio. I'd have one for the guys back there in the black tent, but I'll have to give you something later. There you go. She's truly a patriot, isn't she? And a beautiful one at that. So, um, I'm known as Maggie Rose, but I'm going to come out of the closet. Some of you do know. My real name is Donis, like do nice, D-O-N-I-C-E. And I was given that name 63 years ago when my mother found out she was expecting me. And she was down in Hollywood as a stand-in for Natalie Wood, my uncle's Hugh O'Brien, who played Wyatt Earp on TV in the 50s and 60s. Marine Corps, I think he was, Semper Fi, for those of you Marines. Okay? So I have Marine Corps blood in my veins. Both my grandfathers, one flew with Pappy Boynton, you know him as Dutch Yeager, and my other grandfather was Army World War I Intelligence and World War II. Um, my fathers were both Army and Marine Corps. My husband and I were Army. My father-in-law is Air Force, so a big to everybody out there who served. Men and women, thank you for your service. God bless you all, and for those of you that were in Vietnam, welcome home. We can't say that enough. And for our brothers and sisters, Iraq, Afghanistan, welcome home, and God bless you all for your service. My girlfriend, who is right now taking care of an Air Force friend of ours who just came out of surgery, um, she told me about this book by Wayne LaPierre, Guns, Crime, and Freedom. And she started doing research out of this book and found out the first school shooting in America was 1927. She went through the list and she stopped around 1980 and she kept on going. One of the things I would like to do is I would also like to thank 3% of Oregon and those of you that have come from out of state. Three percent stood with me both in Grants Pass, Oregon during the Sugar Pine Mine and also in Mauer uh, where I was with Lavoie Finnegan four or five days before he was assassinated. Okay, So rest for Lavoie, uh, Janet Finnegan was in Douglas County a few weeks ago. They're showing the movie Dead Man Talking. She and Mike with uh, Citizens for Central Government are coming up with part two and part three of those movies. And um, they're, cr they're crossing the country. We also want to thank Tom McCurgan. Uh, both he and um, Rob Taylor are with the SanctuaryOrdinance.com. The Second Amendment SanctuaryOrdinance.com is where you can go to find out about what they're trying to do with our Second Amendments here in Oregon. And we want to just thank uh, both Rob Taylor we want to th uh, thank Chris Brumbles. He's with the Oregon Firearms Federation, as well as OregonPushback.com. They're here today over on the right-hand side. They've got some things that you guys can sign. Um, we also have www.DefendTheSecondAmendment.org. When I entered the military in 1974, I was green, and I mean green in every way. I was wet behind the ears. I had not been taught my constitution. When I graduated high school in 74, I had no idea what the constitution meant. The closest I knew about civic government was they were starting this thing called Model UN in the public schools. I had no idea what a monster that would become later on. I have two relatives that went to school and became teachers. One taught at a junior college, the other one taught and is teaching right now middle school. I'm now, by those relatives, my blood relatives being called a Trumpanzee, a racer, racist like Hitler, they are now putting me down for the 35 plus years that I served in boots. And they've been basically saying, you got to play along to get along. And I say, heck no! Heck no! For those of you out there, my family, blood relatives, and close friends, you're still my blood, you're still my family and friends, but you know what, I will never, never put down what I believe in. When I signed that contract for the Constitution to defend it, I had no idea 
that I myself was coming under the UCMJ. I didn't get to come under the Constitution, but I defend the constitutional rights of those. And for those of you that apologize to me and say, but I didn't serve, oh yes you did. Standing here today you're serving, whether you know it or not. Don't tell me that you didn't serve and apologize because you didn't put on boots or go put yourself in the line of fire. You're in the line of fire right now, right? Okay? So, and those women that are saying, oh, I was just a, I just a housewife. No, you're household engineers, right? The money, the finances, all the rest of it. So don't apologize. I have a thing, I have a thing on my car that says, well-behaved women never make history. I would like to change that and say, well-behaved Americans are making history. My friend wrote this from the Founding Fathers. She's down in Roseburg, Oregon. She's a disabled veteran, U.S. Army, 1969 to 1971. She paid the grounds just before I went in. She said, quote, they only intended for the Second Amendment to apply to a militia on armed citizenry, that's us, to prevent tyranny which reflects the Second Amendment's specific reference to the right of the people. The fact that the rights of the people appears in the Fourth, Ninth, and the Tenth Amendments. Remember the Boston Massacre. Unarmed citizens were gunned down in the streets of Boston in 1770. The Boston Massacre was a fuse that lit the powder keg of debate over the right of the people to be armed. Let's move to the 20th century when unarmed students at Kent State University were gunned down during a demonstration. Do you get the picture? I remember Kent State. Do you all remember Kent State? Yes. The confiscation of arms focused the attention of our founding fathers on the threads posed by a standing army that was quartered among the people. George Mason, co-author of the Second Amendment, said, quote, a well-regulated militia composed of armed citizens is necessary to protect our ancient laws and liberty from the standing army, unquote. The anti-gun lobby devotes energy to the definition of, quote, militia, unquote, as it appears in Mason's writings. However, Mason made a very clear distinction between a, quote, standing army, unquote, such as a National Guard and or a militia composed of private citizens. The anti-gunners nevertheless claim the militia refers to a National Guard, not to the citizenry at large. Uh-huh. To eliminate any doubt, however, when he said, to disarm the peoples, the best and most effective way is to enslave them. Thomas Jefferson, Samuel Adams, George Mason, Patrick Henry, the militia's rights. Whenever the government in any form becomes destruction, it is the right of the people, that's us, to alter it or to abolish it. I'm going to end with a little story. In 1974, I was on my way to Vietnam. I was going over there as a combat medic to bring home our soldiers, both living, injured, and those in body bags. And I was also going over there to bring home the Amerasian children. At the last minute at Travis Air Force Base, I was pulled off that plane and put on a special mission with about 300 men, many who had done two or three tours in Nam. Five of us women. Obviously, we weren't going to Nam now. We found ourselves landing in Korea. I was in Korea when Vietnam fell, and they brought a lot of the pain and suffering through the 121 evacuation hospital. I remember walking down the street one day with my friend Kim Sae-won. He was a very famous guitar singer. His father was a TV movie star in Korea. And we're walking down the street, and this is where I found out what dictatorship is all about. We're walking along talking. He's a very famous guitar player. He plays a lot of American songs in Myeongdong. And all of a sudden, he wasn't beside me anymore. I turned around, and he was in a police box. Some of the police officers had yanked him into their police station on the corner and he was in a chair and he was having his hair shaved off because it was too long. That's when I learned a little bit about the country I was living in, dictatorship. When I was on the base, I was safe. When I walked off the base, I was living under martial law. 
and having to go by the dictates. I was not allowed to wear pants. I could only wear skirts, dresses, or a pantsuit that matched. I started to meet the university students in 1975 from Myeongdong, from Seoul University, from Iwa Women's University. And they started telling me what dictatorship was like in their country. This very progressive Western country, right? Folks, I have family members now in England that are telling me what's happening under socialism and how they try to soft pedal these words. We are not gonna allow them to take away our guns. Our guns, it doesn't matter what kind they are, they are our best defense against a tyrannical government or a dictatorship. So for those of you that have listened to the Concord Show on Revolution Radio, I thank you. Those of you who haven't, there are so many alternative medias out there that you need to, as the one gentleman said, don't just go ahead and say, yeah, I got your email and send it forward. Make a comment, say something. I just had Facebook take down something that I posted because my heart was breaking the other day because I accidentally watched live what happened in New Zealand. I saw the whole thing, including the woman in the black being gunned down in the street and his shooting her in the back of the head. I saw that. The closest I ever came to death was patients dying in my arms in the ER or on the side of the road. I had never seen anybody murdered before. And I'm glad they're taking it down. We don't need our children, young people, to see that. But we need our children, young people, to realize that if we don't do something now, my great-grandchildren will not have even the freedoms that we have now. God bless you all and thank you. Perfect. All right, we're going to have the band start up. Uh, we might have some more speakers after that. Once again, if you guys need any help trying to you know, reach out to your legislators. We are always available. Yeah. Real quick, I did need to say something. Somebody asked me to say something. We have Wayne right over here um, wearing the, the badge for Lavoy, And he wanted you guys all to know that the media is going to make this look like it's a white man, white woman issue. It's not. We have Hispanics here. We have Indians here from the Cow Tribes. We've got, yes, we have everybody here. So this is, you know, this is not just a white man's issue. We have Afro-American men here that are standing with us as our brothers and sisters. And so we just want to make sure you know that blood, okay, we all bleed the same color blood. True. All right. So let's get this band back up again. Um, like I said, if you guys have any questions, we are right over there. We are literally here just to tell you what you can do to help. You know, writing to your legislators is great. Try and meet with them if you can. Let's make a difference here. Thank you guys. A bunch of young people, a bunch of older people. This is just the best turnout that we could have possibly asked for. My last speaker is going to be Mr. Joey Nations. He is coming up here right this very second. So here he is. Thank you, Amanda, and thank you, Radiant Weapons. Can we get a big round of applause for these guys? Hello, everybody. My name is Joey Nations. I'm going to be really quick here. I am running against Kurt Schrader for Congress in 2020, and we're going to win. Now, I want everybody to know two things. The Second Amendment preserves everything else in this country. Do you agree? Yeah. You have to be fired up about this because you cannot wish for a better life. You have to fight for a better life. Yes. If you want a better country, you're going to fight for that country. So I want to talk about something that the federal government can do, and that is constitutional carry. Does everybody here like constitutional carry? Yeah. After I beat Kurt Schrader in 2020, the first thing I'm going to do is put in a constitutional carry bill that stops any infringement of the Second Amendment at the state level. And so I will be out there fighting for you 100%. Federal preemption is what we need. It will stop unconstitutional bills that they're trying to pass in the marble nut house. And so you guys want constitutional carry. Did I hear that right? Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm going to be there for. The last thing I want to tell you is that the most important thing to stop these anti-gun bills, like these legislators have said, you have to show up at committee. 
These anti-gun bills are going to be up on committee starting in April at the beginning of the month. And we are going to be pounding those committee members to make sure they know we will not stand for any infringement of the Second Amendment. Are you with me? Yeah! Okay. I'm going to wrap it up here, folks. I just want to point out thank you to the young folks, to the veterans, to the families, everybody who's here. Thank you. Sign that Kate Brown out of office. Okay, sign that. Everybody, thank you again. Joey Nation's taking out Curse Trader 2020. Your Second Amendment protects everything else, folks. Act like it. So we are getting to the end of this little rally. I do want to remind people that this isn't the end, that we are not going to stop our efforts after this. We are going to continue to fight for you guys in any way that we can. So be sure to always visit www.defendthesecond.org. We'll be posting updates. We'll be posting just about everything. Um, so, you know, keep up. Keep doing what you're doing. Meet with your senators. Meet with everybody that you possibly can because we really do want to make a difference. Um, we're going to have these guys play a little bit more. It looks like it's going to rain here pretty soon. So, again, thank you to everyone who came out. Thank you to all you people. Thank you to everyone who supported us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So is this the end? I don't know. Scheduled for until I think what, five o'clock or something. Yeah. I don't know if it's the end or not. Yeah. I'll go ask her.